Welcome everyone to Safety and Health Week. My name is Anne Tenye, and I'm the President and CEO for the Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety, or as we're better known, CCOHS. And I'd like to begin by acknowledging that CCOHS is situated on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabeg, on territory covered by the Upper Canada Treaties within lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. In the agreement, the dish represents territory and a single spoon represents that the people are to share the resources of the land, taking only what they need. We have people joining us from all over Canada today, one of the rare benefits of a virtual event. It's safe to say that we're all navigating a new normal in our workplaces, whether uh, it be a hybrid work event, the COVID safety protocols, or the testing you must do, or learning new technologies and ways of communicating. The past two years were especially difficult and stressful, and we were, aren't quite through it yet. And I'm hoping we can continue to be changed by what we learned for the better. Health and safety has never been more important or top of mind with everything we do. Risk assessments are a regular part of our day at work, in our communities, as well as at home, but also greater compassion and accommodations for workers seems to have emerged out of necessity. We looked out for and checked in on one another, especially when so many were working remotely or in isolation. We became more understanding of home situations and responsibilities that pulled people in different directions. And as a result, we became more flexible. We also experienced the downside that came with a virtual environment and home and the workplace merging. We felt the demands and expectations of always being connected to our workplace, boundaries, boundaries blurred and people got burned out. The gift in all of this bit of adversity came in the form of wider awareness of the importance of disconnecting from work. And more than that, the movement to create policies and legislation to enshrine the right of employees to disconnect from work is well underway. This week, all over North America, attention is focused on workplace health and safety as we celebrate safe work practices and the positive impact a healthy environment can have on all of us. I hope this kickoff, kickoff event will be a good start to your celebrations. Without further ado, I'm pleased to play a special message, message from our Minister of Labour, the Honourable Seamus O'Regan, to officially launch Safety and Health Week. I'm Seamus O'Regan, Canada's Minister of Labour. C'est la semaine de la sécurité et de la santé, comme vous le savez bien. Workers need to feel safe where they work. It's up to you and I to guarantee that. And I want to simply share my gratitude for all of you, for the work that you do to protect workers, to keep them safe, and to make sure that Canadians can provide for themselves in an environment that is safe, healthy, and hopefully happy too. Especially through this pandemic, where the risk of the virus in our workplaces and our communities has become another part of our reality. You've been there as we've innovated and adapted our lives to the pandemic with your work on COVID safety, caring for healthcare workers and paramedics, on stress, on anxiety. Grâce à ces lignes directrices, les Canadiens ont été en mesure d'aller au travail. Équiper des connaissances leur permettant de se protéger et de protéger les autres. C'est là un fait tout changé pour les gens. C'est là tout changé pour moi. That being said, to this day, thousands of Canadians still face injuries, illnesses, and death in the workplace. Nous avons appris de nombreuses leçons ces deux dernières années que nous les voulions ou pas. Les milieux de travail ont considérablement changé. Nous savons que la prévention de la propagation de la maladie est un élément majeur de la sécurité en milieu de travail. Et nous voyons clairement comment la santé mentale joue un rôle dans la santé et la sécurité. Nous ne pouvons plus parler uniquement de dangers physiques lorsqu'on parle de santé et de la sécurité au travail. 
It's important this week is also Mental Health Week. Harassment, violence, microaggressions, bullying, exclusion, devaluing somebody's work. These are all devastating to people's mental health. People take these things home with them. Fermons pas les yeux sur leur récit. Rappelons-nous leur histoire et cheminons ensemble. A prosperous economy needs a healthy workforce. But it's about more than just that. We can't stop there at healthy. What about happy? What about fulfilled? C'est pour cela que nous faisons de la santé mentale un élément explicite de la santé et de la sécurité au travail en vertu du Code canadien de travail. Nous travaillons également pour établir une politique sur le droit à la déconnexion afin de nous protéger et de favoriser davantage d'équilibre à travail vie personnelle. We need to answer how much of a person's time an employer has a right to. We need a policy answer to that question. Is it lunchtime? Is it dinner time? Is it bedtime? What spaces can an employer turn into a workplace? Obviously, many of us are working from home, and our homes double as workplaces, but what about someone's bed, their living room, their bathtub? Les travailleurs méritent que nous les protégions et que le nous fassions grâce au meilleur régime de santé et de la sécurité au travail au monde. So we're going to answer these questions with help from workers, from the unions, and from businesses. We're going to expand how we look at the health and the safety of working Canadians and how your work is going to continue to be an important part of that. Merci pour tout ce que vous avez fait et pour tout ce que vous continuez de faire. Merci de m'avoir écouté and take care. I'd like to thank, thank the minister for sharing his thoughts and perspectives and getting Safety and Health Week off to a great start. One thing is for certain, we share a goal to make Canada one of the safest countries in the world in which to work. It's my pleasure now to introduce our next guest, Crystal Agus, the president of the Canadian Centre, or sorry, Canadian, <laughs> there's, a, there's a Freudian slip. The Canadian Society for Safety Engineering, also known as CSSE. CSSE was a founding organization of the North American Occupational Health and Safety Week and has been an important partner in this week since it began. I'll hand it over to Crystal, who is joining us today from Edmonton. Thanks, Anne. It's a privilege to be joining you here from Alberta. It's, uh, I, I feel privileged to be able to welcome everyone to this kickoff event for Safety and Health Week. And I would like to begin with an acknowledgement of the Indigenous peoples of all the lands upon which we gather today. Although we meet virtually, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the importance of the lands which we each call home. I do this to reaffirm my commitment to our responsibility for reconciliation, improving relationships between nations, and improving the understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their culture. From East to West and North to South, let us acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations people who share this land we all call home. I'd also like to thank Minister O'Regan for his time and recognition of the importance of Safety and Health Week for all Canadians. Never has there been a time where the marriage of occupational health and safety and community or public safety has been more meaningful. The global pandemic has changed so much more than how we care for our physical health. It's changed how we socialize and how we view work. In the last two years, the pandemic and shifting employment climates have upended how people work and engage with each other and have put a renewed focus on occupational or workplace health and safety. Safety and Health Week is an important opportunity to highlight this renewed emphasis. This week is a call to action for a partnership between employers, employees, industry, and the public to promote and create safer workplaces and communities. It's also an important opportunity to showcase and celebrate the success of these relationships and collaborations. Like Anne mentioned, Safety and Health Week holds a great deal of significance for the CSSE as our roots in it run deep. Briefly, Safety and Health Week is a continent-wide event that began as NAOSH Week in 1997 in the midst of the NAFTA talks. 
It was originally adapted from CSSE's Canadian Occupational Health and Safety Week, which began in 1986. With partners and advocates across the country, including the Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety and Threads of Life, our goal is to promote and advance the goals of Safety and Health Week and raise awareness about the importance of preventing injury and illness in the workplace, at home, and in the community. We do this by assisting in team building and improved communication between employees and employers, safety committees and safety professionals, reducing workplace injuries and illness by encouraging new safety and health activities, and especially this week, by generating interest in Safety and Health Week. As health and safety professionals, we understand the mechanisms of injury. We understand human ergonomic interfacing and fitting the work to the worker. And we know how to identify occupational diseases and their causes. More importantly, we have access to workers and the working environment. We educate and empower workers to be mindful of their tasks and their interactions with both static and dynamic working environments. Through working hard to raise both individual awareness and employer responsibility, we can continue to reduce the frequency and severity of injury and illness in the workplace together. This week gives us an opportunity to share the successes we found with the community, where the fruits of our labor can be heard in children's laughter, smelled in the mouth-watering aromas of summer barbecues, and overheard in the conversations happening on park benches and in coffee shops. CSSE has been the leading voice of the health and safety industry in Canada for more than seven decades. Our coast-to-coast-to-coast -to -coast -to -coast chapters form a national network of health and safety practitioners and professionals who are dedicated to working on the front lines of creating safer communities. We're committed to playing a vital role in achieving this goal by shaping and defining the health and safety profession, providing education about health and safety, and recognizing our heroes. There are many other Safety and Health Week events and activities being held by local, provincial, and or regional workplaces and communities across the country, including many CSSE chapters and partners. Visit our website to learn more about Safety and Health Week and the awards we give out to our members each year for their outstanding contributions to driving awareness during this week, because we believe that it's by joining together as health and safety professionals through organizations like ours that we can collaborate to turn up the volume on the importance of workplace health and safety. Now let's have a week. Thank you, Crystal, for representing our health and safety professionals and reminding us of the important roles that they play in making our workplaces safer. Our next guest, Shirley Hickman, is the Executive Director of Threads of Life, also a national partner in Safety and Health Week. But more importantly, Threads is an organization that offers support to families who have experienced a workplace tragedy. Shirley, over to you. So I thank you, Anne, for uh, inviting us, the Threads of Life, to uh, participate in this event uh, for Safety and Health Week 2022. And indeed, we are coast to coast, as you mentioned, right? So uh, Christy comes from uh, Alberta and I come from uh, Vancouver Island. So just about as far west as we can go. So I want to welcome everyone to Safety and Health Week 2022. Companies and organizations across Canada, the United States and Mexico, we come together to create that awareness of workplace safety. One question that's always on my mind, why do we need a special day or a special week to recognize health and safety? Every day is about promoting a safe and healthy work environment for all workers. Imagine that world with me, at least for a moment. You remember the song by Louis Armstrong? What a wonderful world this would be. How wonderful it would be if there were no workplace fatalities in 2022. Well, it's too late for this year, so let's keep trying for the future. You 
could take any one of the family members and that is the message you would hear. Let's keep trying for the future, a future where workers come home well at the end of their day. Why? So they can enjoy time with their family, go golfing with their buddies, perhaps camping or hiking, even into retirement. Time to enjoy with families, friends, and vacations. Sadly, today, three Canadian family members will, that dream will end. The lives of their family members, their friends, those they play ball with or have a beer with, that will all change. That will change forever. Since our family's life changed on March the 23rd, 1996, there have been 26 times that we have mourned not have sharing a birthday meal or having a chuckle over something funny Tim would have said or done. When the last lecture you give your child is a drinking and driving message as he's spreading peanut butter on his toast in order to get to work at 6.30 in the morning, how ironic it is that that was a safety message. Tim and his friends were going out to celebrate their 21st birthday, the evening that never came. Instead, they all gathered in a waiting room at the hospital, hoping that their good friend would live. The explosion that, the explosion at Silverwoods Arena that claimed Tim's life shook our family and Tim's friends off the ground. In time and step by step, we would learn to balance life once again, always with that void. Our family was very fortunate. Family, friends, and the community surrounded us. Our family had been very involved with a number of organizations and everyone tried their best to offer support. We tried bereaved families. Those, those members, while they had learned to live with the death of a child, had no understanding of the depth of an investigation and the legal systems that are involved with a workplace tragedy. Waiting for the investigations, sitting in a courtroom to hear what had happened, to sit again at an inquest for the suggestions on what could have been done to prevent this tragedy. The years of waiting and waiting for more. We quickly realized there was no justice. And as a family, we made the decision to honor Tim's life and work with any organization willing to make a difference. It didn't take long for those opportunities and they were provided to our family. And I was invited to share with inspectors, the challenges of living with such a loss. Across Canada, health and safety organizations, including the Ministries of Labour, the WCBs, were all looking at initiatives to decrease injuries to young workers. Our voice became part of that awareness, and Tim's legacy started to grow into workplace safety. Along the way, family members started to reach out to me and with the help of many, Threads of Life came into being. Now, Threads of Life is able to be a safe and soft landing spot for Canadian families when tragedy strikes their home. Ask yourself, is it worse, is it worse to die or to live with a life-altering injury? How does a life change when a worker receives a brain injury and can no longer cope with the everyday challenges? Yet the lives of the family have to go on. They have to cope with their regular day as we each do. To get meals, do laundry, go to work, come home, prepare more meals, plan for the kids to, to to go to a sporting event. Now, they also have to factor in 
ensuring the family member with that severe injury is cared for and to plan for doctor and physio appointments. Lives forever changed. Threads of life family members. While currently 3,200 Canadian family members are receiving services from Threads of Life, we know that there may be many more who would benefit from that peer support. Having someone who is traveling on a similar journey to listen to, to offer suggestions of where to go, where to find support, or things to try or a way that we have found to honor a special anniversary day, a birthday, a Christmas, or the anniversary of the tragic event, even years later. Young workers, workers in their 40s trying to raise a family, workers in their 70s living with occupational disease, all 3,200 Canadians plus their families and friends all lives changed forever. How fitting we are gathered here today to think about workplace safety. And just a few days ago, on the National Day of Mourning, we all stopped to reflect on lives of Canadian workers and their families, lives that were forever changed. How fitting that our afternoon speaker is talking about resilience through adversity. Our family members too have learned how to cope. Many of them have become a very powerful and passionate voice for workplace safety awareness. We don't teach safety. It's just we share our personal reasons why we want you to look out for your coworker. It's not just the worker in the family that's uh, affected, but each coworker, the employer, the paramedics, the doctors, the nurses who tend to these people. If you want a message for your students or your workers, invite a family member to speak. The family member presentation will leave the students or the workers with a broader awareness of the reasons to work safe, why to listen to a safety message, why to ask a question. If you know someone living with a serious life-altering injury or illness, or a family member, or a family living with a fatality, please share that Threads of Life is here to journey with them. Often people need to be reminded more than one time and by more than one person. We, who are in the depths of grief, have a difficult time of remembering or understanding. Today and tomorrow, so back to the song, what a wonderful world it would be. No more workplace tragedies. Today, we all have an opportunity. Today, tomorrow, and each day, to make a difference. Welcome to Health and Safety Week 2022. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, Shirley. I often refer to the work that you do as the reason why we do ours. And I know, as you've said, you share in our hope that one day we can prevent these tragedies and that there will be no families in need of support. So with that, it takes us to the final and one of the uh, highlights of the program. We get to find out who takes the prize in this year's National Youth Video Contest. This year, we had eight videos submitted from the provinces and territories. They were insightful and imaginative, and the talent of these youth did not disappoint. We're going to start by showing you the third place winning video entitled, Are You Okay? Are you okay? Three words, three powerful words. In our modern world, where it feels like time travels at the speed of light, life seems to almost repeat itself. You commute, then you work, then you commute again, then you sleep. 
Commute, work, commute, sleep every day, each minute against the ticking clock, ticking, ticking as each day becomes a race, your tasks pursued and chase a tick, a tick until you stop thinking straight when everything falls apart, when you've lost balance, when you've hit rock bottom. A student stressed to excel at school, a parent struggling to seek balance, a burnt out employee, the one with a broken heart, the one who cannot find peace, the one who cannot be themselves, the one who's experienced anxiety, experienced trauma, experienced loss. Mental health comes from everything around you, and everyone hurts differently. But you are not alone in this fight, and you don't have to fight alone. If you are struggling at work, it's okay to get help. Good communication is key. Let your employer know how you're feeling and work together towards a solution. If you feel able, exercise, eating healthily, and a consistent sleep schedule will help. Give yourself time, for all wounds take time to heal. You are valued, and you will get through these hardships. If you see someone struggling with their mental health, check in with them. Let them know they're not alone and that help is available if they need it. Be the listening ear, the small light to guide them out. Even if it doesn't seem like it, even if you do not have all the answers, your presence means a lot to the person. Mental health is complex, but sometimes, are you okay? Three words, three powerful words can make a lasting difference. And our thousand dollar third prize goes to Eric Shuai of Port Moody Secondary School in Port Moody, British Columbia. Eric's school will also receive a matching prize. And congratulations, Eric, that was tremendous. Next, we'll take a look at our second place winning video entitled Identifying Hazards. When it comes to workplace safety, you do not want to learn things the hard way. And as a young worker in Canada just starting out, it's important to learn about hazards, especially since workers aged 15 to 24 are at high risk for workplace injuries. Here's a checklist to help you figure out what kind of hazards are in your workplace. What kind of work is being done here? What is the nature of your work? And what are the types of things you do? What processes are being used? A good work process includes a series of steps that produce results. They're used to complete and improve tasks. What products are being used? What are the types of products being used in your workplace? Things like cleaning products with chemicals are a great example of something to look out for. What equipment? What equipment is being used? This can be anything from power tools to personal protection equipment like gloves and eyewear. What is the pace? Does your work environment move very quickly or is it more relaxed and slower paced? Find out if it's fast or slow. Who is involved? Everyone has a role to play in workplace safety. Find out the various roles and responsibilities of all who are involved. Some examples are people like your employer and supervisor. What are the unpredictable factors? Unpredictability in the workplace is known to cause stress. Look out for day-to-day -day changes in workflow and unexpected changes in expectations. Now that you've made a good assessment of your workplace, here are some of the next steps you can take. Ask questions. Learn more about anything you're unsure about. Visit WCB for more information or other trustworthy sources online. Stay safe, Canada another tremendous video. I'm pleased to present our $2,000, sorry, our, that video was produced by Kira Sharpley of uh, Charlottetown Rural High School in Prince Edward Island. Congratulations, Kira, on taking home the $1,500 second prize and your school will also receive $1,500. Finally, we take a look at the first place winning video entitled L'Employé Modèle. Bon, là, je vais te montrer comment ça fonctionne. On va faire un petit tour, on t'en demande pas beaucoup. Il n'y a rien de compliqué. C'est ma première journée dans l'industrie. J'ai fait mes formations, mais j'ai à peu près rien compris. C'est l'heure d'impressionner mes nouveaux amis. Je suis le meilleur employé. 
de toute l'usine ici. OK, je vais te montrer c'est quoi tes tâches. Tu vas voir, c'est très simple. Vous voulez mon secret, ben le voici. J'accomplis plein de tâches. Je rends plein de services et c'est gratuit. C'est sûr, des fois, il y en a qui sont fâchés. À ça, je leur réponds. Voyons, c'est moi le meilleur employé. C'est quoi, t'as pas compris? OK, là, tu peux pas tout faire. Il y a des gens qui sont formés pour ça. Mon boss va même et mes collègues vont être impressionnés. Ah, oh, vraiment, moi, c'est tous les rôles que je veux jouer. Parce que du lundi au vendredi, du lundi au vendredi, je suis le meilleur employé de la galaxie. Je suis la superstar du 9 à 5 du matin jusqu'au soir. Je suis un employé modèle, c'est très simple. Je fais tout, tout le temps, personne ne peut m'impressionner. Car je suis vraiment le meilleur employé. I'm pleased to present our $2,000 first place prize to Thomas Laflamme Gamache and his collaborators, Etienne Petit, Ezekiel Smith, and Roger Gamache of Drummondville, Quebec. Congratulations uh, to all of you for your excellent video. This recognition is well deserved and your creativity is impressive. Je vous remercie énormément pour ce vidéo. La créativité était très impressionnante. Would you like to say a few words, Tomas? Um, so I just have a few words to say. Um, uh, say a few words, honestly, I'm very proud of our work we've done on this project because yes, it was, it was not the first time me and Etienne worked together. We did another project before, like a short film and it was, it was excellent. So I wanted to do it again. Also, I just wanted to thank my father who played the boss, my friend Ezekiel who helped me through the creative process and finally again Etienne because he did all the soundtrack by himself and played the worker in the video. Without, without him, I wouldn't have done much. So thank you for your trust. I'm so glad that my video made it this far. I'm just, I doesn't have the word, I'm very happy. So. Yeah. Bravo and merci. Thank you, Thomas, to you and your whole team. And we wish you well in your future creative endeavors. Encore une fois, je vous remercie, Thomas, et uh, l'équipe, toute l'équipe. Et j'espère que votre créativité va continuer uh, pendant toute votre carrière. Merci beaucoup, je l'espère. And before we close, I want to acknowledge our panel of very busy judges for their time in evaluating the videos. Thank you to Sharon D'Souza, National Executive Vice President of the Public Service Alliance of Canada, Carrie Mores Sugiyama, uh, Manager of Orig Original Programming for the Aboriginal People's Television Network, as well as Shirley Hickman, Executive Director of Threads of Life. And thank you to all of you for spending some of your day with us. This is the second virtual kickoff for us. And although it's not the same as being together in person, it's allowed more people than ever to attend and be part of the national launch. I expect that next year, this event will look quite different, likely in a hybrid format. We can only hope. Um, I expect that, um, and hopefully you'll all be able to attend. Health and Safety Week is only one week, but our commitment to creating workplaces and environments that are physically and psychologically safe must remain strong every day, all year long. And on behalf of our guests, our national partners at CSSE and Threads, Threads of Life and our staff, I wish you a fruitful safety and health week. Now we're gonna take a 90 minute break And I hope you'll join us all again at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for our keynote address by Peace by Chocolate founder, Tarek Haddad. Tarek's message of hope and peace in, in his resiliency through adversity presentation couldn't be more timely and is sure to inspire us 
to make our own impact on the world. We'll see you back in about 90 minutes.